you need to eat white meat probably once or twice a week, and then the other two or three days a week, eat no meat at all. But just make sure that you eat fish one time a week. Now, next slide, please. This is something which is very close also to my heart, and I am co-authoring a book uh, that, uh, Lord willing, it will be on the market sometime late this year about the relation of essential fatty acid and cancer. Now, all of you can read this information. It's available in the journals about the effect of essential fatty acid and breast cancer. You do remember that I told you, and I disagree with my uh, colleague and my good friend, uh, Dr. Klein, who said that cancer have a lot of causes. I think cancer have one cause. And anybody will volunteer and tell me what the cause is? Anybody knows? This was reported, by the way, by a double Nobel Prize winner. His name is Dr. Warburg. <coughs> Dr. Warburg won Nobel Prize for biochemistry twice, in 1931 and 1966. And he made his discovery in 1924 and unfortunately got lost uh, during the Second World War uh, because he, he, he uh, cooperated with Hitler uh, during the Second World War and they forgot about him. Uh, even that he had a great discovery. I mean, the guy was a Jewish guy, but he cooperated with Hitler, so they, you know, he was on the you-know-what list, and then they forgot, forgot about him. Now, Warburg described that there is one cause for cancer, and I believe he's correct. The cause of cancer is hypoxia or hypoxemia, which means, in simple English, lack of oxygen. Lack of oxygen where? At the cells in the cell's wall, in the, cell, in the tissue, in the body tissue. Now, why your oxygen is low? Because you don't breathe enough? Your oxygen is low because you are deficient in essential fatty acids. What are you talking about? Well, let me give you an example. Put some flaxseed oil or some olive oil or some, any oil you want. Put it in the window. Open the cap, take the cap, and then put it out. What happened to it? goes rancid. Why does it get rancid? Because it gets oxidized. How does it oxidize? It sucks the oxygen from the air. So our theory about cancer, which is really Warburg theory, that essential fatty acid, I call them oxygen sponge. They suck oxygen. So when your body have enough essential fatty acid, your body is very well oxygenated. You have plenty of oxygen. If your body is deficient in essential fatty acid, guess what? You don't have enough oxygen. And if you don't have enough oxygen, your body gets fermented, and then you have an invitation for the abnormal growth of cell. I don't care where your cells are, whether your prostate, whether your breast, whether your brain, whether in your any place in your body. These are the cancer is caused, in my opinion, and in my humble, humble opinion, and Dr. Klein can disagree with me as much as he wants to, but what I'm trying to tell you is that the major cause of cancer has been the change in our diet. Now, you don't believe that, do you? Well, let me give you some statistics. I want to give you some statistics and tell you what happened to the great American cancer story. In the year 1900, the incidence of this cancer in this country was 3%. In 1950, it was 20%. In, 19, in 2000, it was 40%. In the year 220, it's going to be 50%. And they predict in the year 2100, all of us, if we are still around, we're going to have cancer. Now, you guys come and tell me, like somebody come and tell me, that we have more cancer right now these days because our genes have changed. You're wrong. Our genes have not changed. Since the Lord made Adam and Eve, our genes have been the same. I don't care whether you are black or green or blue or yellow or white. I don't care who you are. We have the same genome, which is 30, 30, uh, 37,000 genome. Still the same. I don't care who you are or what you are. And our genes have not changed. But what have changed is how we live and how we eat. 
And this is where the money is in cancer. There is a lot of studies right now, and hopefully when our book comes, hopefully in the next few months, uh, it's going to be about 350 pages. Uh, it's going to talk only about essential fatty acid and cancer. And I think the major, if I can tell you anything, the major cause of the significant increase of cancer in this country and in the world is the excessive consumption of omega-6, not enough consumption of omega-3, or consumption of too much of the two, but with the wrong ratio. Next slide, please. Let me finish, um, if I may, and then I'll open for question. Because now, let's, let's pass this slide. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. <coughs> uh, now, I want to stop on this slide just for a couple of minutes. Uh, the proper amount and ratio of fatty acid and its relation to organ development, especially the nervous system. Now, all of you know that the children who are breastfed, they are different from the neurological point of view from the kids who are bottle fed. Cow's milk is made for cows. <laughs> Human milk is made for humans. Now, some ladies, of course, there is exception, so I'm not being a male chauvinist pig, but what I'm trying to tell you I don't know if you are aware or not, until 1992, there was no essential fatty acid in the formulas. This has been a disaster. They put it in the dog food, but they didn't put it in the human food. <laughs> so why do you think we are having a lot of these kids with ADD and short attention span and decrease? ADD is an epidemic in this country. Everybody have short attention span. Everybody have decreased concentration. Why? because there was a deficiency at the stage of development of the central nervous system of this baby when he was in the womb of his mother. And then after he was born, we added more fire to the fire. We provided this baby with a formula that it does not contain essential fatty acids. Guess what? They just added to the formula about 10 years ago. Now, there is no question there is a, if you look at the children with ADHD, that the ratio of their omega-6 to omega-3 is very screwed up. <coughs> which means they consume too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3. There is a definite effect of essential fatty acid and behavior. If you consume too much omega-6, you are a pain in the neck. You are irritable. You are fussy. You are edgy. Uh, a fly passed by and you want to fight with him or fight with her for no reason. Uh, versus if you have the proper ratio of omega-3 and omega-6, you are calmer. You are quieter. You are at even mood. You are not as irritable or as grouchy as, you know, if you eat too much omega-6. Next slide, please. Now, I don't know if Sam wants me to cover alpha-lipoic acid or not, uh, because I think I would really like to leave some time. So I'm going to skip, uh, you know, skip some of these slides. If... Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Let me, let, me, let me just address some of these things, uh, because otherwise we'll probably take about another half an hour to talk about alpha-lipoic acid. Alpha-lipoic acid is, is uh, let, let's go back one, one slide. Alpha-lipoic acid is probably the most potent antioxidant known to man. I don't think there is any more potent uh, antioxidant agent than alpha-lipoic acid. Uh, it is very important to assist in the production and the effect of vitamin C and vitamin E. Not only in the extracellular space, but in the intracellular space. So you need to remember, if you don't have enough alpha-lipoic acid, guess what also is screwed up? Your vitamin C and vitamin E are screwed up. So it's very important to realize that this, this, this agent, which is classified under vitamin, uh, is very, very important and essential element. Next slide, please. I'm going to cover about the possible use of alpha-lipoic acid. Uh, one of the most, these are all in your list, but I'm going to cover only number one. Next slide, please. <clears throat> there is no question that alpha-lipoic acid is very, very potent agent in our kids and our adults with diabetic neuropathy. Uh, I have seen not too many, thank God, because I see only children, and I have very few children who develop uh, diabetic neuropathy by the time they're still under my care, uh, thank God I would say most of the kids that I see, I would say at least 9 out of 10, they are under excellent or good control for their diabetes. But I have seen some kids who came to see me from different physicians 
Uh, and by the time they were 18 uh, years old, or I have seen one who was 16 years old, by the time they came to see me, they have diabetic neuropathy. I don't think I can describe for you, but I have heard from the patient how painful diabetic neuropathy is. It's very painful. Uh, I have, we have a patient who gets to stay up all night long, hurrying and screaming, to the extent they, they put him on all kinds of narcotic, including morphine, uh, which will not take care of the pain. I mean, it took care of the pain when the morphine knocked him out. And then once, on, once he went on alpha-lipoic acid, within two weeks, his pain were gone. No pain. So if I want to leave you with anything, there is no question that alpha-lipoic acid is very, very important agent that you have in your hand without prescription for anybody who complain of leg pain, feet pain, uh, numbness, or you feel that these things related to, uh, related to diabetic neuropathy in a diabetic patient. Next slide, please. Let me close over here, and then I'll probably leave about five minutes you know, for, for questions. What I tried to convey to you is not a rocket scientist thing. It's just a common sense thing. And I said that something has changed. Uh, man has been looking for longevity all over the place. Invent some form of medicine, some form, some form of her herb, some form of a passion uh, or potion or a formula or whatever it is uh, to prolong his life. I think the secret of good life uh, and uh, healthy life is your diet. I really do. Next slide, please. Uh, I think one of the major disasters that we have, and this is a slide I do for my diabetic patients when I give a talk about diabetes, the huge increase in sugar consumption <clears throat> in this country is the major cause of widespread of obesity and health problem in this country plus the reduction of consumption of healthy essential oil, vitamin, and trace minerals. So I have completed the story for you. I talked to you uh, 18 months ago on vitamins and what their deficiency can cause. I talked to you about trace mineral and what their deficiency can cause. And today we talk about essential fatty acid and what I believe their deficiency or their absence for our diet can cause. And I think if you have deficiency in the three of them, you are in bad trouble. Your house is collapsing. Your body is falling apart. You have no walls to stand, probably no ground to stand on. You need to remember, and that's something very important, essential fatty acids, by the way, they do not work if you are minerally deficient, which means for the metabolite of essential fatty acid, the APA, the DHA, the GLA, guess what? They need trace mineral to convert from the parents, omega-3 and omega-6, to the children, omega-3 and omega-6. So for the parents, omega-3 and omega-6, the oil, to convert to the metabolite, EPA, DHA, GLA, uh, DTA, all these metabolite of omega-3 and omega-6, you need minerals, especially zinc, especially chromium especially vanadium, especially manganese, especially copper, especially iodine, especially selenium. Uh, you need vitamin C. You need vitamin E. Uh, you need B1. So if any of these guys and all of these guys are deficient, you're going to have a problem. Uh, next slide, please. This is what I want to close by and open it for question. Most of the degenerative diseases are caused by mineral, vitamin, and essential, essential fatty acid deficiency. All food is medicine, and the best food is the best medicine. Anybody knows who said that? Epocrat. <laughs> Thank you. This was said 2,000 years before Christ. This was Epocrat. Hippocrates, Epocrat. He said that 2,000 years ago. This is not what Habib is saying. This is said 4,000 years ago. All food is medicine. And the best food is the best medicine. And what I, what I am saying, if a diet can cause a disease, then a diet can prevent a disease. The final thing I want to say, I have put this little knowledge that I have over the past seven or eight years together. 
and with the help of my uh, colleagues,